It's a unique theatrical experience, and all of us who've seen it, you know, that's what we react to. We love it, but we've also never seen anything like it before. You really feel like, oh, I'm, I'm at home here. This is, this is great. One of the things I loved about Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 was the title because I could never remember the, the name of it. And I was like, I'm seeing something about a comet and two people and it's in Russia. There's a lot of people, they come in, they don't know what they're in for. And they think, okay, this might be a little odd. I've seen sort of these gimmicky, highly praised shows over the last couple of years and haven't been a big fan of any of them. And it's a dinner theater maybe. You're looking around and you're thinking, well, I don't think this is necessarily for me. You know, I, I hope I can last through it. And yet, I walked into this transformed, gorgeous Russian vodka bar with amazing lighting and, and, and set design, and it was really unlike anything I'd ever seen before. In 19th century Russia, we write letters, we write letters. I was just swept away from the first moment. I, I just loved it. See nothing but the all around you. Um, actors are bringing you drinks and they're dancing right next to you. An actress sat down right next to me and sang to another actress across the table and I was part of this scene. But it's not one of those shows where you feel beset by actors and, and uncomfortable by their presence. And then they can have this really intimate uh, moment right in front of you. It's very cinematic. It just feels exactly the right way to tell this particular story in this particular style. Natalie, 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 I must love you or die. Some very, very smart and very witty and very talented people put that show together. Our director, yes. Rachel Chapkin, <laughs> has staged it all uh, environmentally. So yes, this yes, is a foundation for a vision of a tent that will rise here slowly over the next few weeks. They basically built their own space, which is unheard of. And then there'll be a show inside of it, with a show about uh, Tolstoy's War and Peace. Yeah. It's definitely closer to a musical than an opera. Tolstoy himself hated opera. Just despised. I thought it was like this this elite highbrow art form. I cannot follow the opera or even listen to the music. I see the it's so smart. I mean, I can't imagine what made them think of it. I had this idea kind of hiding in the back of my head, and I'd had it for a while, and I'd never quite you know, mustered the courage to actually say it aloud to anyone. I'd said it aloud once to one other person, and they had shot it down immediately. You can't do that. We can never sell that. You, can, you can't do that. We can't pay for it. You can't. But I said it aloud, though, thoroughly expecting them to say, well, let's maybe do something a little more manageable, a little smaller. The magic of this piece is because they had that freedom. And then I was terrified. And then you had to do it. Like, ah, oh, God, now I've got to write this thing. There's a war going on out there somewhere And Andre isn't here What's the story? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a... <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to do a very good job of describing this plot. It's very Russian. It's about a 70-page sliver of War and Peace. I was completely unfamiliar with War and Peace, so I knew nothing about the story going in. It turned out it mattered not at all. Yes, it's, it's War and Peace, or it's from War and Peace, but it's not War and Peace. Within the first five minutes, you are given all the information that you need to know about who these characters are. This is a complicated Russian novel. Everyone's got nine different names. So look it up in your program. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And then everyone's on the same ride together. Natasha! It just brings you right into it. And the fact that you felt you were sitting in a foreign place, you know, a minute before, you know, that, that's really the magic of this piece. It, it immediately grabs you and says, sit back and relax, you're fine. This is going to be fine. If you go back through Broadway history, there are not many shows that have come along that have done this. Something like Oklahoma. You know, West Side Story was one of a kind when it came along. Their chorus line, which also was something which you hadn't seen before. It was a new way of thinking. And that's the same sort of feeling with The Great Comet. He is quite madly in love with you, Marty. 
It's basically a love story about this young girl who comes to the big city and falls in love with the wrong guy. A young rogue by the name of Anatole Kuragin. And she is seduced. Yeah, she's seduced. And then saved. And then saved. Saved by me. Oh, God. Don't give that away. And that's sort of the beautiful journey that you go through. Is you love her, you sort of hate her, you want to shake her. <laughs> you definitely and, then, shake her. and then you just want to hold her and help her find redemption. It's not only the writing, but the direction, the staging, the design, and of course they got a cast that was phenomenal. You look around the room and you see people just moved. Everything about it was just like what you want theater, what I want theater to be. We, what else should we say? Should we say something else? We can't talk about the comet. Well, yeah, what is the comet? Why is it called the comet? Ooh, I don't know. Have to come in <laughs> to the show and find out. The name of the show, Natasha Pierre and the Great Count of 1812, is actually inspired by a Bob Dylan song off of Blood on the Tracks named Lily, Rosemary, and the Jack of Hearts. There's no correlation between the two stories at all other than I just like the sound of that.